currently on my way to Oxford Physics for their stargazing open day basically they throw open the doors of the department and let in almost a thousand people for stargazing and games and talks so there's lots of other stuff going on in the building today we've got like a science cafe going on as well which is pretty cool so there's lots of people that have brought sort of their science experiments to showcase everything that's going on. Let me try and show you the hubbub of activity in here. Lots of things going on. Um, I'll try and find some cool ones and chat to people and we'll see who we can find that's here. No, oh, it's just all day long I'm gonna be here. <laughs> ah. Well, this is cool. What is this? This is a cloud chamber. A cloud chamber. Um, um, charged particle that uh -huh. flies through, then the rain forms around where the particle goes. And that's what causes those little streaks occasionally. Because the rod is a radioactive material. Right. So it's emitting electrons that fly out. And then you can see where the electrons went by the, the little particles of alcohol rain that form along the track. It's really cool. Okay. Stood here trying to decide blue or red. Blue or red? Okay, so this is my favorite room. And uh, it might not look like anything here, um, but this was my idea and I'm very excited about it. So these are supposed to be stars, but if I come here, some of you might recognize what that is if I can get it fully in shot, but that is Orion. So if I stand here, it looks like Orion because this is like Earth's perspective. But if I go over here, you can see the stars move completely out of sync and it's to show people how spaced out the stars are in the sky like these three are the belt stars and you know one of them is an extra thousand light years away from earth so these are all hung from cork ceiling tiles <laughs> um, like just normal office ceiling tiles and so every single cork tile is an extra 50 light years away from earth is the idea and um, you can see this is like star in the belt right at the back and it's basically just like uh, leds in like diy christmas baubles so it was really fun to make. Um, and we've got sort of Rigel, which is like bright blue, and Betelgeuse, which is red, showing people the different types of stars as well in the constellation. Um, so I really hope people like it because it's my favorite thing that we've got here today. It's kind of like an art installation. And I'm really quite proud of it. So you guys are Chipping Norton Astronomy Group, right? And you brought all these lovely telescopes for us today. Um, do you want to just sort of tell us like what we brought, what we might expect to see tonight, if it clears? Okay. Um, this particular telescope here is a, it's called a refractor. It's yeah. uh, 127 millimeters in diameter. Uh, it's actually carbon fiber. Oh. It's got a, almost a one meter focal length. Um, certainly, if there is clear spell tonight, we should be able to get a good glimpse of the Great Orion Network. My favourites, so that'll be good. And then this looks more like sort of very fancy binoculars, yes, these essentially. Are, uh, <laughs> uh, 100 millimeter diameter binoculars with low power eyepieces. So tonight, if it clears, we'll probably be looking at things like uh, the Seven Sisters, the Pleiades, Star Cluster, nice white fields, because unfortunately the moon, no planets back this evening. So uh, a nice wide field setting like this should show those quite nicely. Well, um, we've got other scopes here. We've got uh, little shoot acid grains and some refractors um, and the Dobsonians. The yeah. Over on the right -hand end. These are my favourite because you literally just plonk these down and go, They're right? Quick, so it sets up the eyepieces a nice angle as well. They're great for kids yeah. to look through. Quite high up, aren't they? The eyepieces. Yeah. So yeah, these look great. I guess these would be good for. Planets, moon. They're good for a variety everything, of really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything. Very good, very good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody it's, is thinking, yeah, <laughs> if anybody is thinking of getting a telescope, I would. I mean, I'd suggest that. Yeah. Would you suggest that Absolutely. as well? Then definitely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, you heard it here first, everybody. This is what you should get. <laughs> 
So apparently people are now queuing to get into the building, which I'm very excited about the idea that people want to queue to get into physics is so cool. Love this. <laughs> by wowing her with my scientific prowess. But that is not why we are here today. No, it is not. We are here to test the space and astronomy knowledge of the six people here around me that are currently quaking in their seats that they may get these things wrong that they are supposed to know. Uh, we will be scoring tonight's quiz, the game, obviously, between the two teams. But we've also got you, the audience. And you notice behind me, I've got written on the board and slowly if these two teams do not get the questions if they fail in their pursuit of knowing everything astronomy we will open up to the audience and you may be able to steal points from the team who may be able to beat them in the end that is your goal I think you should place a bet on the audience yeah we play a bet all right, so we're sort of halfway through the day now. There's a huge queue outside, which is ridiculous that you want to queue to get into a physics building to talk to us. Um, we've just played Only Connect, which was really good fun. I got a little bit hyperactive because I love quiz shows and I love space and astronomy. And it was all of those things combined. Um, we're halfway through the lecture theatre schedule for the day. So we've got Luke Jew coming up next, talking about the earliest light in the universe, which I'm really excited about. We heard from Chris Lintart before about the New Horizons mission. We heard about Roger Davies, about how to classify galaxies using like fruit and veg and a plate, which was a great talk as well. So looking forward to the rest of the day. We're playing Call My Bluff later, where the teams try and convince the other team that the definition of the astronomy word that they've got is the wrong one rather than the right one, which will be really good fun. Having a great day, basically just chatting to people, like chatting about old telescopes and everything, and everyone just loves space, so it's just a great day. <laughs> when this radiation was released. Each, each bit of light would have had one final collision with an electron before all the electrons were taken away and locked up in hydrogen gas. wondering what this giant queue behind me is for, it's because it finally cleared and the clouds have moved and they parted and the telescopes are on the roof now so people are just waiting to do a little spot of stargazing at about quarter past seven in the evening so I'm hoping they'll see some of Ryan Nebula, maybe spot Mars, see what they can find. I'm just so glad it cleared. <laughs> So everything's kind of winding down here, we're all packing up now. We're just finished in the lecture theatre, we finished playing Call My Bluff, which was fantastic. Uh, people come up with the weirdest definitions for words, it was so, so funny, it was just amazing. Um, they did eventually come clear, so people did get a chance to stargaze sort of between the gaps in the clouds. So people were really excited to do that and see the telescopes. I didn't get a chance to go up there because I was sort of trapped inside in the lecture theatre. But I think everyone's had a great day. We've had 1,041 people through the door, which is ridiculous. Like, the people will queue in the rain to get into a physics department, and also 1,000 people will think to turn up as well. Absolutely amazing. I'm so pleased that some people came. I hope people had an absolutely great time and had a fun day with families or couples or whoever came. It was great for me and uh, we'll do it all again next year. 